This here is the 1876. It was modeled after the 73 in a big way. Its action is almost the same. This gun has a kind of an interesting history. It was the only lever action ever used uh, a lot in the buffalo hunts of the Old West. And the, it was also used by the Canadian Royal Mounted Police. And it originally came out in 4575, which is a really good cartridge. Uh, it later come out in, uh, let's see, 1879 and 5095. And then in 1884, it come out in, well, ex yeah, 1884, it come out in 4060. And I guess just before that in 1880, it come out in 4560 straight. And see, those were straight cases because a lot of people didn't like the 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 uh, neck down. The neck down gave you approximately an extra 15 grains of velocity, so they said. I don't know if, how uh, true that is, but I think it probably does give it more velocity. This one here has a 28-inch barrel, and there you were seeing the elevator come up and down. The, some of the originals also come up to a 32 inch barrel in the military style guns and they held 13 rounds of ammunition. You can see this uh, little hole in the back of it where you can put stuff. What I want you to see here is that the barrel is actually cut so that the tube goes under the barrel with no gap. And uh, it's a it's a really unique uh, gun. It handled quite well and shot good. Although I will say that um, some of these Italian-made copies aren't as good as the original. This one here has a few problems, which we'll discuss toward the end of the video. Also, stay tuned. At the end of the video, we'll have uh, a slow mo, and we'll also have. Uh, showing how the action works because we're going to open up the gun after we shoot some black powder so we can clean it and we'll show how it works. See right there you can see the barrel is cut so that the tube actually fits in a moon shaped groove in the bottom of the barrel and I, that's how the original was. It's a really interesting that they did that much work here it's a little blurry but it clears up on a I mean can you imagine doing that back in the day <laughs> under undercutting on the bottom of the barrel so that it can fit the tube can fit that that close and that tight here's the cartridge the one uh, second from the left is the 4570 just for comparison here I'm shooting this log. This is smokeless powder loads with toilet paper on top to make sure it's compressed load. And here it's just a different angle of the same load. Kind of give you an idea of the recoil of this cartridge. It, it actually can be loaded up considerably hotter than what I had it. Uh, this right here I think is the black powder load. I put it on slow mo, I think. Yeah. Do you saw that fire come out? <laughs> that was pretty amazing. This is more of those. And at the end, the end of the video, I have a really, really slow mo to kind of try to let you see the fireball and everything come out. I know some people can slow it down on their YouTube and watch it, but um, not everybody can do that. So that's why I slowed it down like that. And here I'm fixing to shoot another one. You're going to see a fireball and a long string of, yeah, you saw it right there, of fire come out. And that's with a full um, 95 grains of black powder and a 300 grain Barnes bullet. And they actually had quite a bit of power. Here I'm scooting up because I didn't know if the other camera was getting me on film. And, uh, 
there's there they did not have the velocity that the 5100 and 10 has with uh, smokeless powder and they didn't expand very well it was kind of surprising the bullets actually just punched right through the wood and through the uh, sheetrock and didn't really expand you could almost reload them that 28 inch barrel is pretty awesome it's a uh, I guess it's only two inches longer than mine, but this looks longer because it's actually two inches longer than the 1886. This is my, uh, actually my brother's rifle. He bought it brand new. It was like $1,800 when he bought it. It had a few problems when he bought it that didn't actually function properly. And he called up the uh, customer service and they kind of gave him the cold shoulder and said that the warranty is voided if you didn't shoot factory ammunition. Well, at the time, there wasn't anywhere you could buy factory ammunition that he ever heard of. And who wants to shoot ammunition that's over $100 for 20 rounds? That's ridiculous. Anybody who owns a gun like this is going to reload it. The main problem with this gun is that the it's rifling is overboard. It's supposed to be uh, 59 to 510, but this one is actually 515. But the problem is it's it's out of round. It's uh, three of the grooves are much deeper than the other ones. So when you get a bullet that smushes into those three grooves, it's it's kind of out of round. So it's it's not super accurate in. Uh, we, he was trying to get them to send him another barrel or rebarrel it, but they they said it, the bullets come out the end, it shoots or whatever. Kind of smart of it, but you know, with any company, some people, you know, one employee could just be a rude um, person and not truly represent the company. So, and it's not my gun. I, I may I would probably bug them until they took care of it. Uh, but I mean, this is pretty interesting shooting this water it just kind of shot it straight up in the air and it kind of just rains down like if there's this faucet up there just dumping it down and the uh, bullet after it went through the water it really didn't expand very much at all and then it still went through a bunch of sheetrock after it went through that two and a half gallons of water I thought it was kind of interesting how this keeps coming down, coming down, because it kind of just shot it straight up in the air. Right here is where it went through this uh, log right here. This is a black powder load. That's uh, four and a half inches. And this right here is like two and a half, or two inches, yeah. And so all together it was like six and a half inches. But see, this bullet is really a short uh, bullet, but... And it just caught it by the very, very, very tip edge of the base of it. It almost went all the way through. And it seems like when it pops out, it would just take off. I've never seen a bullet sticking out like that out of a piece of wood. And that bullet is not much longer than that. So it's just barely caught in there. I just had to show you guys because that's just <laughs> it seems unreasonable for it to do that. And uh, here I'm going through the... Uh, sheetrock trying to find the bullets because I shot several men there just to see what it did. This sheetrock's been sitting out in the weather for a while so it's gotten probably softer than it normally would be because uh, some of it kind of falls apart. But the amazing part is that the bullets actually went through 19 sheets of this three-quarter inch sheetrock and they didn't much room out any. I was trying to find that uh, one that went through the water. It actually stopped in there, and I found it, and it, I'll show it to you in just a second. But uh, anyhow, so they actually penetrated pretty deep. Uh, uh, there's a video you can watch on um, shooting this sheetrock with various calibers. Uh, and most of the bullets stopped way before here, but they also expanded, so that's part of it. 
the one let's see yeah the one on the left is black powder you can see the bullet because it's black powder the other one's the one that went through the jug and you can see it's just a little yeah that's the one that went through the jug it's just a little bit out of that one there is almost perfect you can almost stick it back in there this is showing the action how it works it's a toggle link just like the 73 just a bigger uh stretched out version see there's the elevator going up kind of trying to show because uh, some people won't have ever had one took it apart and you can watch the elevator I, well i don't know if i show it there there's the back of the door here i'm uh showing from the other side there it's popping up the elevator pushing the hammer back at the same time and then there's this little lock on the back the original um child safety lock that's pretty hard to turn little babies could never turn that and then your gun could be locked where it can't be levered. And if you didn't have a round in the chamber, it couldn't be fired, you know, by a small child. See how that action works? It's just pretty interesting. You can see, I mean, it's so smooth, so easy to work. It's just a really, really neat action. And see that bar there pops up the elevator Elevator pushes the shell up in line with the bolt. The bolt just pushes the shell out of the elevator into the chamber. It's a really neat um, style of action. It's not real strong, but in uh, when Winchester was designing cartridges, they designed the cartridge to stick in the chamber while it's being fired and then um, to shrink after. And before then, that's why the 4570 was so bad about sticking in the chambers because it was made out of material that didn't necessarily shrink after it was fired. And uh, Winchester really did a lot of uh, development and design of cartridges so that they could use them in these toggle link actions and they wouldn't put undue pressure on the action. There's that slow mo. So, anyhow. Uh, I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, I hope that if you like this, you'll hit the bell, like, and subscribe. Here's a uh, here's a video with the two of them together, kind of just showing you the difference. And uh, the the eighty six has a twenty six inch barrel, and it's a lot thicker barrel than the seventy six. Seventy six has a twenty eight inch barrel, which it looks really long on it. Um, and it holds a lot of shells because them shells are quite a bit shorter than the 5100. I think it holds like 12 shells, but I'll check on that. And we're going to do another video soon, especially if you guys like this very much, with that 1886. I mean, 1876. And, we're, of course, we're going to do videos on the 1886. Anyhow, if you'll hit the bell and the like and subscribe if you like this,